We greet you this morning on Pentecost, the day of the birth of the church of Jesus Christ here on this earth. Let's please rise and sing our opening hymn, hymn 370. Let us pray. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Spirit of the Lord hath filled the whole world. Alleluia. God arise and let his enemies be scattered. to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. The Spirit of the Lord has filled the whole world. Alleluia. Alleluia. Hear but our Lord Jesus Christ. Christ saith, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like unto it, Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets.
The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Let us pray. O God, o God, who as on this day didst teach the hearts of thy faithful people by sending to them the light of thy Holy Spirit, grant us by the same Spirit to have a right judgment in all things and evermore to rejoice in his holy comfort through the merits of Christ Jesus our Savior, who liveth and reigneth with thee in the unity of the same Spirit, one God, world without end. Amen. Here beginneth the 28th verse of the second chapter of the book of the prophet Joel. <clears throat> and it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams, your young men shall see visions. And upon the servants and upon the handmaids in those days will I pour out my spirit and I will show wonders in the heavens and in the earth, blood and fire and pillars of smoke. The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the great and terrible day of the Lord come. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be delivered. For in Mount Zion and in Jerusalem shall be deliverance as the Lord hath said, and in the remnant whom the Lord shall call. Here endeth the lesson. Thanks be to God. The psalm appointed for today is Psalm 145, found on page 520 of the prayer book. Psalm 145, page 520. I will magnify thee, O God my King, and I will praise thy name forever and ever. Every day will I give thanks unto thee and praise thy name forever and ever. Great is the Lord and marvelous worthy to be praised. There is no end of his greatness. One generation shall praise thy works unto another and declare thy power. As for me, I will be talking of thy worship thy glory, thy praise, and wondrous works. So that men shall speak of the might of thy marvelous acts, and I will also tell of thy greatness. The memorial of thine abundant kindness shall be showed, and men shall sing of thy righteousness. The Lord is gracious and merciful, long suffering and of great goodness. The Lord is loving unto every man, and his mercy is over all his works. All thy works are praise thee, O Lord, and thy saints give thanks unto thee. They show the glory of thy kingdom and talk of thy power. That thy power, thy glory, and mightiness of thy kingdom might be known unto men. Thy kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, and thy dominion endureth throughout all ages. The Lord upholdeth all such as fall, and lifteth up all those that are down. The eyes of all wait upon thee, O Lord, and thou givest them their meat in due season. Thou openest thine hand, and fillest all things living with plenteousness. The Lord is righteous in all his ways, and holy in all his works. The Lord is nigh unto all them that call upon him, yea, all such as call upon him faithfully. He will fulfill the desire of them that fear him. He also will hear their cry and will help them. The Lord preserveth all them that love him, but scattereth abroad all the ungodly. My mouth shall speak the praise of the Lord. And let all flesh give thanks unto his holy name forever and ever. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. <laughs> The epistle is written in the second chapter of the Acts of the Apostles. When the day of Pentecost was fully come, 
they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as a fire, and it sat upon each of them, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost, and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. And there were dwelling at Jerusalem Jews, devout men, out of every nation under heaven. Now when this was noised abroad, the multitude came together and were confounded, because that every man heard them speak in his own language. And they were all amazed and marveled, saying one to another, Behold, are not all these which speak Galileans? And how hear we every man in our own tongue, wherein we were born, Parthians and Medes and Elamites, and the dwellers in Mesopotamia, and in Judea, and in Cappadocia, in Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, in Egypt, and in the parts of Libya about Cyrene, and strangers of Rome, Jews and proselytes, Cretes and Arabians, we do hear them speak in our tongues the wonderful works of God. Here ended the epistle. Thanks be to God. Just to let you know, um, the hymn board is wrong. What's in the bulletin for our gradual hymn is hymn 111, and that's what we'll sing. Continuation of the Holy Gospel according to St. John. Glory be to thee, O Lord. Jesus said unto his disciples, If ye love me, keep my commandments. And I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever, even the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him. But ye know him, for he dwelleth with you and shall be in you. I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. Yet a little while, and the world seeth me no more, but ye see me. Because I live, ye shall live also. At that day ye shall know that I am in my Father, and ye in me, and I in you. He that hath my commandments, and keepeth them, he it is that loveth me, and he that loveth me shall be loved of my Father, and I will love him, and will manifest myself to him. Judas saith unto him, not to scare it, Lord, how is it that thou wilt manifest thyself unto us, and not unto the world? Jesus answered and said unto him, If a man love me, he will keep my words, and my Father will love him, and we will come unto him, and make our abode with him. He that loveth me not keepeth not my sayings, but the word which ye hear is not mine, but the Father's which sent me. These things have I spoken unto you, being yet present with you. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things, and bring all things to your remembrance, whatsoever I said unto you. 
Peace I leave with you, my peace I give unto you. Not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Ye have heard how I said unto you, if I go away and come again unto you. If ye love me, ye would rejoice, because I said I go unto the Father, for my Father is greater than I. And now I have told you before it come to pass, that when it is come to pass, ye might believe. Hereafter I will not talk much with you, for the prince of this world cometh and hath nothing in me. But that the world may know that I love the Father, and as the Father gave me commandment, so I do. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Ghost of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of the Father and he shall come again with glory to judge both the quick and the dead, whose kingdom shall have no end. And I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Lord and giver of life, who proceedeth from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spake by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, I now to in baptism for the remission of sins, and, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please be seated. Good morning. And a most blessed Pentecost to everybody, the day that we celebrate the birth of God's holy church by the descent of the Holy Spirit. So anyway, super day, and uh, as, as you are, are aware, or may not be aware, um, we kind of kicked Mother's Day dinner back to this Sunday, and uh, Seth has made his barbecue, and you even smoked some kielbasa and stuff and everything. Dude, nicely done. That was really good, by the way. He let me try some. Um, so, uh, so stick around, and, uh, and we got, Got mimosas and that type of stuff going on too, so uh, so it'll be a nice way to um, have a Sunday dinner. So please do stick around. All right. Um, one of the things I want to point out to you is uh, the Wednesday night folks got a uh, got a preview of this. Um, Father Paul kind of spent a little bit of time doing a little bit of painting work, and one of the things that uh, that he did, I have it, it's listed in the bulletin. He he made a virtue tree. Um, his, it's an original blanket chip. You know, I'm, be, I'm sure it'll be worth a, a couple hundred bucks one day, right? Long enough. Long enough, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, <coughs> but to be able, it shows, the tree shows the seven virtues. And uh, so we encourage you to take a look at it. It's, you know, one of the things that underpins um, a Christian education is this whole idea that um, the virtues 
are what will be inculcated in children um, as we raise them up and teach them. And so we want to be able to visually see that. So it's, it's wonderful. It's just go down the hallway towards the classroom. You can't miss it. All right. Okay. Uh, let's see here. Hendersonville Rescue Mission. Um, we have our, uh, our quarterly uh, serving of meals that day, May 29th. So uh, go to the sign-up sheet. Tom's not here right now. And uh, see if you uh, need, to, need to sign up to do that. We encourage that. It only, only takes an hour and a half. So, uh, so it's a pretty good, uh, pretty good way of getting out there and actually putting your faith in action. Uh, VBS registration. Remember, I think we've got, uh, I think S Cynthia told me we have like uh, 14 or 15 kids signed up already. So that's pretty good. Um, also, winter. Boy, she just pooped out, didn't she? Yeah. <laughs> she is turning one. And uh, the family is having a birthday party for her here in the parish hall. And all of you all are invited if you want to come. And they encourage you to come. And you're going to be doing barbecue again, aren't you? And Allie, you're going to be doing some chicken too, is that right? Okay, all right. So, so you, you know, you, you, have a, you have an option. But it's also the day that uh, Chloe and Peyton are actually graduating. And that's at 4 o'clock. And uh, so, you know... You can go from place to place pigging out on Saturday. That'd be great. Um, but you're not excused from Sunday if you show up at any of those things. <laughs> there we go. I pay attention. Um, so, uh, but if you're going to the graduation, the one thing we do need, uh, the families request that uh, you sign up out in the entryway so that they know how much food to buy and that type of thing. So, okay. Thank you very much for that. And... Uh, Oh, 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 I forgot. Um, has your son, did he actually walk across the stage yet? He did. He did. Okay. Well, congratulations to him for sure. Um, has he asked a particular question yet? No. Drum oh, He's oh, got the brain. Okay. Okay. Well, I don't want it to go out to the whole world, you know. Well, Do what? We're in suspense. We're in suspense. That's exactly right. Okay. Uh, and Andrew... Uh, Andrew is asking his sweetie to marry him. So it's going to happen here sometime soon, but we don't know yet. So anyway, um, but if you want to send him a card congratulating him for uh, his uh, graduation, it's in the bulletin. Just write a quick note to him. I, I know he'd love to get a, uh, a note from you. All right, how about the blessing of birthdays and anniversaries? Anyone had one in the past week? Nope. Okay. Uh, David, um, hymn 376, our sermon hymn today. Thank you.
today's gospel, Jesus said, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Please be seated. Well, here we are. It's Pentecost Sunday, and it's the 50th day after Easter. And as I mentioned earlier, it celebrates the birth of the church in the coming down of the Holy Ghost upon the disciples, who the scripture tells us were all together in one place. Now, some folks have considered this may very well have been the upper room where they were, the place, the same place where the betrayal of the Last Supper happened, the same place, too, where was the making known of the resurrection behind the closed doors of the apostles' hearts and minds. Maybe. We don't know for sure, but that's okay. But you see, again, over and against the hidden things of our hearts and the closed doors of our minds, Pentecost is something completely different. It is something that is completely out in the open. It is completely public. It is completely set up so that everyone can see it. In other words, it's universal. It is for everyone. Remember, we do hear them speak in our tongues. And so out of the Babel of all the nations, out of the differences and diversities of tongues and cultures, one thing is heard openly and for all people and for all times. And that one thing is simply the wonderful works of God. See, we are united. We are united in the praise of God. Contrary to the prevailing winds of controversy throughout all the churches, you see, doctrine, teaching, does not divide, rather it unites. The, essentials, the essential teachings of the church are comprehensive and unifying. Without them, we fall into complete disarray and confusion, a veritable babble of tongues and conflicting opinions, a confusion of noise and nothing but nonsense. When we subordinate the teaching of the faith to experience, then what occurs is we become divided and rent asunder. The challenge actually is to gather up the broken fragments of human experience into the unifying vision of Almighty God the wholeness and healing of our humanity are to be found in our being raised up in the mystery of God, revealed and proclaimed in the life of the church, faithful to that mystery. The wonderful paradox of this day is that the elevation of our humanity to participate in the life of God in this world happens because of the coming down of the Holy Spirit. And it appears in the scripture as a wonderful event, uh, an ecstatic experience. It tells us a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind and cloven tongues as like fire resting upon each person there, resulting in the astounding and disturbing phenomenon of speaking in tongues. But the content of the experience is the teaching of Pentecost. The content is the unifying praise of God heard in all the tongues and languages of the world. And so it could be argued that speaking in tongues is precisely what we do every Sunday when we gather together for worship. And this does not diminish the wonder and mystery of God. The revelation of God as the Holy Trinity is something born on the wings of the Spirit 
leading our spirits into something to be understood. Something understood which unites all the aspects of revelation into one single unity. It's also something to be understood which gives unity and order and purpose to the forms of human experience. The experience of Pentecost, ecstatic and mystical, and what that means is something that stands outside of ourselves. What it does is it humbles us and exalts us. It signals the redemption and sanctification of the experiences of our lives. Consider wind and fire. They're actually kind of intangible things, aren't they? I mean, have you seen the wind? I mean, you can see evidence of it, but you've never seen it. Or how about fire? Have you ever touched fire? <laughs> Probably not on purpose. Maybe by accident when you fell down at a campfire or something like that. But, you see, they are open for us. They open for us, actually, the mystery of God as Holy Trinity. The mystery that we can only really truly think about and adore. We cannot take the mystery of God captive to our understanding, reducing God to our experience or to our culture. Because that is to make God my personal deity, my personal savior, as if God was my possession, your possession, our possession, or some kind of societal, cultural token or something like that. Because you see, that's the actual essence of idolatry, making God in our own image. It is the exact reverse of what is signaled in the Pentecost vision of wind and fire. You see, we are made in the image of God. Something of the spiritual reality of God is wonderfully signified in the Feast of Pentecost, in the coming down of the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of the Father and the Son, the Spirit who signifies the essential nature of God. And we are raised up into the mystery of God by God's embracing us in the vision of his glory. Only so can we be truly changed. St. Paul says this in 1 Corinthians, We all with open face, beholding as in a glass the glory of the Lord, are changed into the same image from glory to glory, even by the Spirit of the Lord. See, God engages our imaginations. God engages the cultural distinctives, whatever they are, of our humanity, but without being reduced to the cultural and the experiential. Pentecost gathers us into the whole pageant of God's dealing with our humanity. Breaks down in three things. First, there's creation. The spirit moving over the waters brings order and unity to the chaotic forms of the material world. God breathes his spirit into the dust of humanity and we are made alive, hence living beings. There is redemption. The drama of God's dealing with his wayward, recalcitrant, and disobedient people who seek to have things their own way. God's spirit speaks to prophet and people and constantly and steadfastly recalls them to his law, which is his word and will for his people delivered on the mount of glory in a cloud of majesty and awe. God leading his people in the wilderness journeys of our persistent sinfulness as a pillar of cloud by day and a pillar of light by night. Once again, these contrasting and intangible images of things seen and heard open for us the transcendent mystery of the glory of God. And above all else, we are being taught by him. And finally, the third thing, there is sanctification. The process of our being conformed to the image of God by lies of holiness lived in each of all the different circumstances of our lives. And it only happens when we let the Holy Spirit guide us. How does that happen? Do we go out there and have some kind of like 
holy raves, as they used to call those parties in the streets, through some kind of emotional ecstasy, through the only two tangible manipulation of our hearts and minds by drugs or whatever. No. It happens through us being taught through the intensity of our worship that engages our emotions with the high things of God, which is quite different from the manipulation of our emotions, through the experience of worship that constantly grounds us in the mystery of God revealed and honored. You see, the Holy Spirit is the spirit of unity and order. Our hymn 217 says, it th says this, Come, Holy Ghost, our souls inspire, enlighten with celestial fire. Thou the anointing spirit art, who dost thy sevenfold gifts impart. What are those sevenfold gifts? Gifts of the spirit. They're the spiritual and intellectual qualities of the soul. They're not material or physical things. They're the spirit of wisdom and understanding, spirit of counsel and ghostly strength, the spirit of knowledge and true godliness, and then finally the fear of the Lord. They are the gifts that embrace and gather us to God in worship and truth. They signal the highest potential of our humanity. Not only do we have an end with God in his everlasting reason, which was signaled by the ascension and the enthronement of Christ that we just celebrated last week, but we participate in the divine life now through the gifts of the Spirit made manifest in the teaching life of the worshiping church. The gospel that we heard read today on Pentecost is again taken from that portion of St. John's gospel that's known as the farewell discourse. You know, last supper time when Jesus is telling the guys, I'm fixing to leave. Well, those gospel lessons have been with us from Easter through Ascension to this very day. And it is very much the formative gospel for our instruction throughout these holy times and seasons that we celebrate. Jesus has been at pains to open to us the larger meaning and reality of God, teaching us that God is the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching us that the Spirit of the Father and the Son will, as he says, lead us into all truth, that the Spirit of the Father and the Son shall teach us all things and will bring all things to our remembrance. And what are those things? He says, whatsoever I have said unto you. So the whole drama of God's word and the witness of scripture, um, certainly as in our Anglican tradition in what I consider, of course, to be its truth and glory, would remind us it is comprehended in the creeds and in the patterns of holy doctrine and worship and life that arises from the guidance of the Holy Spirit in the ordered and disciplined life of the church. When we forget that, then we are at the mercy of ourselves in the idolatry of our experiences. The paradox is that only in the Spirit of God revealed in the pattern of order and doctrine can there be the redemption and the sanctification of our experiences. Pentecost signals the redemption and the sanctification of human experience by gathering us into the life of the God who has been revealed to us, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost. Amen. Now to God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost, we ascribe as is most justly due great honor, glory, and majesty, both now and unto the ages of ages. Amen. Um, if you want to crack windows next to where you're sitting, feel free to do so. I know some of you have. It's for some reason the air conditioner kicked in this morning, then all of a sudden it just kind of petered out. You can hear it's running. So, you know, it's not doing us any good. So, anyway, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven.
Let us pray. Dearly beloved, we offer the Eucharist this day in union with Jesus Christ, our great high priest, who continues to make intercession on our behalf in the heavens. We also offer in great thanksgiving for the coming to us of the Holy Ghost, whereby the church was born this day. Please pray this day for all those who are sick and suffering, remembering especially those of this church, for Allie and Child, Barbara, Brenda, Carolyn, Dave, Francis, Jeanette, Julie, Lilibon, Norm, and Randy. We pray for our family, friends, and others who need and desire our prayers, especially those who we remember now in our own hearts. We pray for those who are traveling. Remember Anne, Barbara, Bill, Chuck, Joanna, and Richard. In our provincial prayer cycle, we pray for St. Luke's Church in Port Orange, Florida, especially in their search for a vicar. Please pray for our school here at All Saints Church. And finally, I bid your prayers this day for peace in Israel and the Middle East. Pray, brethren, that this my sacrifice and yours also may be acceptable in the sight of God the Father Almighty. May the Lord receive this sacrifice at my hands to the praise and glory of his name, both to our benefit and that of all his holy church. Amen. Let us pray for the whole state of Christ's church. Almighty and ever living God, who by thy holy apostle has taught us to make prayers and supplications and to give thanks for all men. We humbly beseech thee most mercifully to accept our alms and oblations and to receive these our prayers which we offer unto thy divine majesty, beseeching thee to inspire continually the universal church with the spirit of truth, unity, and concord, and grant that all those who do confess thy holy name may agree in the truth of thy holy word and live in unity and godly love. We beseech thee also so to direct and dispose the hearts of all Christian rulers, especially Joseph our president, Roy our governor, and all those in authority with them, that they may truly and impartially administer justice to the punishment of wickedness and vice, and to the maintenance of thy true religion and virtue. Give grace, O Heavenly Father, to all bishops, especially Chandler, our ordinary, and all priests and deacons, that they may both by their life and doctrine set forth thy true and lively word, and rightly and duly administer thy holy sacraments. And to all thy people give thy heavenly grace, and especially to this congregation here present, that with meek heart and due reverence they may hear and receive thy holy word, truly serving thee in holiness and righteousness all the days of their life. And we must humbly beseech thee of thy goodness, O Lord, to comfort and succor all those who in this transitory life are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity. And we also bless thy holy name for all thy servants departed this life in thy faith and fear beseeching thee to grant them continual growth in thy love and service, and to give us grace so to follow their good examples, that with them we may be partakers of thy heavenly kingdom. Grant this, O Father, for Jesus Christ's sake, our only mediator and advocate. Amen. Ye who do truly and earnestly repent you of your sins and are in love and charity with your neighbors, and intend to lead a new life following the commandments of God, and walking from henceforth in his holy ways, draw near with faith, and take this holy sacrament to your comfort, and make your humble confession to Almighty God, devoutly kneeling. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, judge of all men, we acknowledge and bewail our manifold sins and wickedness, which we from time to time most grievously have committed by thought, word, and deed against thy divine majesty, provoking most justly thy wrath and indignation against us, we do earnestly repent and are heartily sorry for these our misdoings. The remembrance of them is grievous unto us. The burden of them is intolerable. Have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. For thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, forgive us all that is past and grant that we may ever hereafter serve and please thee in newness of life to the honor and glory of thy name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of his great mercy hath promised forgiveness of sins to all those who with hearty repentance and true faith turn unto him, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. You would comfortable words our Savior Christ saith unto all who truly turn to him. 
Come unto me, all ye that travail and are heavy laden, and I will refresh you. So God loved the world, that he gave his only begotten Son, to the end that all that believe in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Here also what St. Paul saith, This is a true saying, worthy of all men to be received, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. Here also what St. John saith, If any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and he is the propitiation for our sins. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks unto our Lord God. It is very meet, right, and bound and duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, according to whose most true promise the Holy Ghost came down as on this day from heaven, lighting upon the disciples to teach them and to lead them into all truth, giving them boldness with fervent zeal, constantly to preach the gospel unto all nations, whereby we have been brought out of darkness and error into the clear light and true knowledge of thee and of thy Son, Jesus Christ. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and saying. Glory be to the Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, for that thou of thy tender mercy didst give thine only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who made there by his one oblation of himself once offered, a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice, oblation, and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world, and that institute, and in his holy gospel command us to continue a perpetual memory of that his precious death and sacrifice until his coming again. For in the night in which he was betrayed, he took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of this, for this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this as oft as ye shall drink it, in remembrance of me. Therefore, Lord and Heavenly Father, according to the institution of thy dearly beloved Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, 
we, thy humble servants, do celebrate and make here before thy divine majesty with these thy holy gifts, which we now offer unto thee, the memorial thy son hath commanded us to make, having in remembrance his blessed passion and precious death, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, rendering unto thee most hearty thanks for the innumerable benefits procured unto us by the same. And we must humbly beseech thee, O merciful Father, to hear us, and of thy almighty goodness vouchsafe to bless and sanctify with thy word and Holy Spirit, and these thy gifts and creatures of bread and wine, that we, receiving them according to thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood. And we earnestly desire thy fatherly goodness mercifully to accept this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Most humbly beseeching thee grant that by the merits and death of thy son Jesus Christ and through faith in his blood, we and all thy whole church may obtain remission of our sins and all of the benefits of his passion. And here we offer and present unto thee, O Lord, our steps, our souls and bodies, to be a reasonable, holy and living sacrifice unto thee humbly beseeching thee that we and all others who shall be partakers of this holy communion may worthily receive the most precious body and blood of thy son Jesus Christ, be filled with thy grace and heavenly benediction, and made one body with him that he may dwell in us and we in him. And although we're unworthy through our manifold sins to offer unto thee any sacrifice, yet we beseech thee to accept this our bounden duty and service, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom, in the unity of the Holy Ghost, all honor and glory be unto thee, O Father almighty, world without end. Now, as our Savior Christ hath taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And with thy we do not presume to come to this thy table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in thy manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under thy table. Thou art the same Lord, whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of thy dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body, and our souls washed through his most precious blood, and that we may more dwell in him and he in us. Amen.
behold the Lamb of God, behold him that taketh away the sins of the world. Lord, I am not worthy that thou shouldst come under my roof, but speak the word only, and my soul shall be healed. Lord, I am not worthy that thou shouldst come under my roof, but speak the word only, and my soul shall be healed. Lord, I am not worthy that thou shouldst come under my roof, but speak the word only, and my soul shall be healed. of our Lord Jesus Christ, which was given for thee. Preserve thy body and soul unto everlasting life. Take and eat this in remembrance that Christ died for thee, and feed on him in thy heart with faith and thanksgiving. The blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, which was shed for thee. Preserve thy body and soul unto everlasting life. Drink this in remembrance that Christ's blood was shed for thee and be thankful. Amen.
Christ and let us pray together in great thanksgiving. Almighty and ever living God, we will love us our own. Let us pray. Almighty and most merciful God, grant we beseech thee that by the dwelling of thy Holy Spirit we may be enlightened and strengthened for thy service. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee in the unity of the same Spirit ever, one God, world without end. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Depart in peace. Thanks be to God. The peace of God which passeth all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen.